Okay. Okay, so it is recording. Just going to wait. Anyone who has their mics on, just please mute it. Unless you have a question, then feel free to ask any question you want. Um, Alright, so I guess we will be starting. And for whoever's on TikTok watching, you guys should check out the Discord because you'll have a full screen of what's going on. Okay, guys, so let's start off with the entire market, okay? So we've been looking at this triangle forming on the market. Let me just delete everything, actually, just to give you guys a clearer picture of what's going on. So for the past three weeks, we've been looking at this triangle over here that's been forming. And during this fall over here, I told everyone on Discord, guys, be patient, be patient. We, we had three long weeks of being patient. And around this bottom over here, we started entering a bunch of positions. Why? Well, we finally saw a trend change. You, see, you guys see over here, the four hour trend is always going lower and lower and lower and lower. And then over here, we see for the first time, boom, we see a high, a low, then over here, a little um, high and a higher low compared to the last low, and then boom, break of this resistance here. That indicated right there that there was a potential reversal, so we started entering a bunch of positions, and this week we profited very nicely. So this is just the overall market, obviously, but we took a bunch of individual positions on uh, many names. So this is basically what's going on. Now, where we stand right now, what's the next potential scenario? Are we going to see more upside or is the market going to correct? So that's the real question. And it would be very healthy if the market was able to correct, let's say, towards this EMA before continuing to go up. And that's where we would enter even more positions. So that would be actually really, really uh, ideal for us. But of course... If the market bulls are very strong, they could continue to push higher. We are, however, expecting correction at some point. So wherever this tops out, we will be looking for the next dip to start buying more positions for a potential move up. Okay, so that's why right now I actually opened up some short positions around these levels just in case we get the pullback. And because I don't want to sell my swing positions that are going to be, you know, three to six weeks long. So I opened up some short positions just in case we get a little fall and then I'll be exiting my shorts for the next move up. So market psychology right now is we're still in this triangle, this tightening range. Can the bulls tomorrow pass over this tightening range or will we see the correction before going up? Okay, so we're looking at this triangle and obviously this triangle can break either way, right? So this doesn't mean that we're going to see a bullish momentum. If this continues to go down from here, and then we see a break down the triangle, well, guess what? Then we're in a bearish uh, break on this pattern. So we've, we've just been observing this pattern and we're gonna continue to observe it and base our plays off of the general market. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over a couple of positions that I have and uh, I don't know if you guys, I, I'm sure a lot of people on Discord also took these with me. So just to go over them a little bit and show you guys what's going on in their psychology. So first things first, okay? What I like to do when I'm analyzing stocks is I like to go to the weekly time frame, so the, the one of the larger time frames, weekly or monthly, and scout what's going on in these patterns. So right now we see on the weekly time frame we see this triangle forming, right? And I wanted to buy BLNK. This is a uh, an EV stock, BLNK, at the bottom of this triangle. So what I did was we zoomed into the four-hour time frame. Uh, sorry, whoever has their mics on, please mute them because there is interference. Thank you very much. Yeah, if you guys could just mute yourself or else I'm going to have to mute you uh, myself. So, yeah, I see Ryder. Ryder, if you could uh, mute yourself, please. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to mute. Sorry, guys, I have to just mute some people. Okay, so, now... We looked at the four hour time frame. Let me just delete all this mess over here. This is from the last analysis. So the four hour time frame was in a four hour downtrend. And then for the first time ever in this entire downtrend, we saw a high, sorry, a low, a high, a higher low compared to the last low, and then a break of this 
uh, resistance right here. Okay, so that was my signal number one to buy into BLNK. So I put half my position on the break. And then as soon as it came up and dipped onto the EMA, that was my second entry on BLNK. And now we are comfortably about 20% profit. And I'm looking at this larger triangle forming. Uh, sorry guys, you, some people still have their mics on. I'm going to start muting some more people over here. Okay. So if we see a topping out over here and then a little correction before we continue higher, well, I want to be buying my third position on this correction. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at throughout the week for BLNK. Let's see if we can get a solid, uh, healthy correction, which means we want to see declining bear volume. Okay, something like we saw over here on this correction. So declining bear volume. And we want to see that over here for a next move up. Okay, CLSK, also congratulations to whoever got in with me. We got in on this little trend change. Let me zoom in, delete all of this. Just to show you guys, so there was this nice little triangle forming over here. We bought it on the break and we're now about 19% in profit. I'm looking at exiting my positions because now it's forming a new triangle. So I actually want this triangle, if it breaks bullish, I will be exiting my positions right around, where was my target? Right around here, okay, which would give us a total of approximately 27 to 30 percent profit so i'm i'm going to be monitoring this little triangle this week to see if it can break bullish from here and give us an extra 10 percent profit on clsk next i know a lot of people are looking at workhorse so i'm going to explain workhorse a little bit let's zoom out to the longer term time frame okay so long term time frame we're in a weekly uptrend over here right comes up all the way till here and then for the first time ever, boom, we hit a weekly downtrend. Why? Because we have a high, a low, a lower high, and then a break of this level here. So that right there created the weekly downtrend. And now I want to go scout for a support that's around this level on the weekly time frame to potentially get a bounce, right? So what am I looking for? I'm looking for a daily and four hour trend change. So let's zoom into the four hour trend. This is what's happening right now. It's a very clear four hour downtrend. We just see clear uh, lower lows and lower highs on the four hour, right? And then, oh, for the first time we pass the, the high for the first time, and then we create a higher low compared to this low. So this, what this tells me is, okay, start scaling in. So just to give you guys an idea, I'm going to zoom in even more to the 15 minute trend and this is where I bought my positions. When I saw the 15 minute time frame going from a low, a high, a higher low, boom, started entering and then on the break entered more. So I got two positions on workhorse around this level here and now we're just tightening up on this little triangle and if we get a bull break, well, we have entered on a very, very nice uh, position. If we get a bear break, we lose approximately... Let's calculate our risk. We lose 3%, and if we're right, well, we get about 20%. So this was a pretty nice setup for a trade, and whoever wants to play it, well, it's not too late. So if Workhorse breaks out of this triangle bullish, it's definitely not too late to get in. And if it follows the other stocks that have been going pretty bullish recently, then we can have some nice momentum towards the upside, okay? Next, NVIDIA. We also bought NVIDIA this week. Why? Same reason as... So basically, NVIDIA, AMD, Microsoft, Amazon, um, a, a bunch of those big tech names have a very, very similar weekly uh, triangle. So I'm going to zoom out to the weekly triangle just to show you guys. This, oops, this triangle right here on the weekly is very similar on, for example, NVIDIA. And then if I go to AMD, Microsoft, uh, NNOX, Amazon. So they all look very similar, kind of like the, the S&P 500 actually. And that's why I took some positions on this dip over here, okay, on this little four hour trend change. That was my buy. When you guys see the, the transition between the green and the red rectangles, that was my buy. And now we are at all time highs and I'm going to be looking for another weekly correction to buy my next position. So NVIDIA was more of a, a longer term swing. I'm probably going to hold it until uh, mid-December, so about a month. 
and uh, let's see how that plays out, okay? Next, CXXI. This is a risky one, but whoever wants to take it this week, it's forming something quite nice. So this is risky because it's, you guys see the choppiness in this chart, so you guys see a lot of uh, wicks, right? There's a wick here, a wick here, a wick here. It's very choppy, which means there's low volume. Okay, so there's not many people trading it compared to Microsoft and, and Amazon and stuff like that. However, I am liking the fact that we're forming a similar pattern to when we had this pattern here, which broke out very nicely. So this, this one over here gave about 100% gain. And now it's consolidating like this and it's starting to break out. So you guys can see the volume, the green volume is increasing over here starting to break out of this uh, this bigger pattern and it's forming a smaller pattern which it's a little harder to read because obviously it's a very choppy chart so this is not for new traders I suggest this only if you're comfortable trading these kind of charts because it's a risky one and the potential loss on this one is about 10% uh, somebody has their mic on let's see who it is okay thank you very much and the potential profit is about 40% on this one if it's able to go all the way up, which means we need both volume to start increasing and we have to start breaking all of these resistances here, here, and here, okay? So I already have some positions that I bought on the way up and it's not too late to buy in if you want to get in on this little triangle here for the next move up. So CXXI is on my watch list for the week. Let's continue to our other moves so PLTH another really good move we had this week so we bought it at the break of this little triangle over here okay which gave us about 20% uh, profit and I'm also looking at this longer term triangle like this so let me zoom out to show you guys the clarity of this chart which is super important okay so clarity of the chart we have a low high higher low lower high so it's just tightening up in this range and now we finally got, I'm going to remove this, you guys can see the EMA actually, this blue line, that acted as a support every time it touched it. So when we were near here, I said, okay, this is time to start entering some positions, so let's scout for an entry. Which means what? Zoom in to the 4 hour time frame, and that's when we noticed this little triangle here forming on the EMA, and boom, we bought it right here on the hourly trend change. And I'm going to show you guys one more thing. So it actually formed a double top on this resistance right over here. Double top was is a first signal to sell. Okay. And now we're looking at potential correction for the next entry. So if this comes down like this and then starts making the uptrend again, well, that will be our next entry. And if it continues even lower, well, we don't know where exactly it's going to correct, obviously, but wherever it finishes correcting, we want to see another trend change to buy in just like we did over here, okay? So PLTH on watch for the week. PTON, also a nice trade. This was pretty simple. This was just a uh, four hour trend change right over here. So low, high, higher low and break. And we made it to exactly our Fibonacci target over here of 13% where we sold a part of it and now it's correcting. If the correction remains healthy, then we could see potential continuation towards the highs, okay? So on watch for this week, PTON as well because we're looking for healthy consolidation. What does that mean? That means we want to see declining bear volume and we want to see a nice angle to the consolidation. If, if the angle is very steep, so for example, if we come up all the way till here and then correct like this really fast, that's not healthy consolidation. This is very aggressive selling pressure. So this, I would be a lot less interested if this happened. But if we can get something like this towards the EMAs in a nice calm fashion like this, then we will have a nice potential move up. Okay. And then, so I'm just going to go through another few stocks that I, that I own uh, and that you guys might own as well. And then after we'll go to the main plays we're looking at for the next few weeks. So, MMED. We actually bought MMED on this little triangle over here at the bottom of this entire move. So how do we know that this is the bottom of the move? Well, you can see a clear hourly downtrend during this entire move down, right? Then over here for the first time it creates a low. 
a high and a higher low. Boom. That's our first signal right there that something is happening. And then we patiently waited, patiently waited, patiently waited. And at about this point, I bought some because I saw some buying pressure that it started accumulating. And boom, we got the first break. And then out of that first break, we actually had a second triangle to be looking at, which was this one right here for the move up. Now, my original target was 133 on uh, MMED. However, we got very close. We only got to 131. So I did not sell my positions yet on this one. And now we're looking at potential correction. So this correction to remain healthy has to stay above the EMA. If it stays above the EMA, and I want you guys to notice the declining bear volume. Okay, so look at the, the red candlesticks on the volume. They're declining, so that's a good sign. If it's able to hold the EMA and continue higher, boom, we're good. We have a new stop loss over here, and we're set for continuation. If, however, the bear volume increases, then I will be looking at exiting on the next bounce for a potential leg down. So I don't want to be caught in that leg down, so I will be selling my positions for approximately 15% profit, okay? Next one we're looking at on the longer term time frame is Tesla. Why? Because we're forming, once again, like AMD, Microsoft, Amazon, everything else, we're forming this nice triangle over here on the weekly time frame. And I've bought and sold Tesla a few times within this triangle, but now I'm looking at the longer term perspective, which means I want to see Tesla be able to, after this, this move up over here, I want to see the correction be very healthy. So very healthy correction could either be sideways or a little bit angled downwards. And if this happens, we could buy another position on this bottom for a potential move up out of the longer term triangle. And this would be, so basically this triangle lasted between August 24th and now, which is what, three, four months or something. This is about... 80 days, so yeah, this is a three months, let's say, which means that we will be holding this for a solid month after this, okay, approximately. So Tesla is on watch this week for another buy, potentially. Let's see how the market reacts, because if everything crashes really fast, then that'll give us even more opportunity to buy in, okay? Okay, now I'm going to go to into a few plays that are more shorter term, okay? So these are, I'll do some shorter term plays for the week, and then some longer term plays that I'm looking at for the next few weeks. So, first things first, NEO. I know a lot of people are looking at NEO, so I want to cover it. Now, if you're looking at a long term position on NEO, I do not suggest it at this point. Why? Because we have ran up in the last few weeks hundreds of percent okay you guys can see this chart over here there's no weekly consolidation yet which means if you're buying up here for a long-term position your risk to reward is very very uh affected so you have a lot of downside potential and the upside potential even if it's even if it could go really high your your downside potential is still extremely high for example the last weekly support was 40 percent away so are you, you have to tell yourself, are you willing to risk 40% of the money that you're going to put into this just because you want to be impatient and not wait for a decent correction? Now, that being said, on the longer term time frame, I'm still looking at some patterns on the shorter term time frame. For example, this hourly chart over here, okay? If you guys look at this little triangle that formed over here on the hourly chart, oh, if I can get it properly, there we go. So this is the triangle that formed on the hourly chart, okay, right over here. And if we get the same thing happening over here on the EMA, on the hourly EMA, we could definitely see, definitely see another move up towards psychological resistances of, let's say, $45, $46, $47. what I'm planning on doing with NEO, if we get a decent break with some volume and if the market is bullish on Monday, because if everything's correcting, I'm not taking this uh, trade. But if everything is going bullish, then I'm looking bullish on NEO for a little move up. So I'll be playing some options on it. And this would give, let's say, about 10% on the stock and maybe, I don't know how much on the options exactly, but this is my plan for it. I'm also looking at, so I want you guys to notice this, observe it. This double top over here, you guys can see the resistance that got hit twice, as well as this resistance over here that got hit twice. So if we pass this first resistance over here, 
that's an initial sign that the bulls are keeping their control and if we pass both of these resistances in one or two candlesticks that is extremely bullish so that's why i'm looking at neo for a short term play only i'm probably going to hold it for one to one to two days max but two days is really pushing it so one day max let's say and uh, for a longer term position on neo I, I suggest waiting a little bit because we are extremely extended look at the last time we touched touched these emas perfect buys on these emas and now we're very very above the ema so be careful on neo this is a risky trade not suggested for new traders especially because it could go very south okay so next thing we're looking at zoom i know some people are looking at zoom so i wanted to cover it on zoom we're in a daily downtrend so high low lower high downtrend because it broke and what we're looking at now if i zoom out is the potential that we're hitting this weekly ema into continuation so the question is can zoom hit this weekly ema and continue higher just like it did over here just like it did over here and over here so that's why zoom is on my watch list right now and how do we get an entry around here well let's let's zoom in a little bit let's zoom in to zoom and right now we saw a bottom over here it moved up above the emas and now it's consolidating sideways above the emas if this pattern breaks bullish i'm still looking for a lower high compared to this high over here so even if this breaks bullish i'm looking for a lower high somewhere here and then a correction and then a move up so basically based on all of this what i'm looking at is oh, adam if you don't mind muting yourself that'd be very appreciated thank you very much i'm looking at let me just delete this uh, yellow stuff over here i'll, I'll keep that one and I'll believe the rest. Okay, so on Zoom, I'm looking at this somewhat unclear pattern. So it's harder to notice as a beginner trader, but there's a consolidation pattern that's happening over here. If it hits the EMA and continues up, we're looking at a potential move towards here of about maybe 7%. And from there, I want to see a consolidation. That's where I'll be entering most of my position on Zoom for a potential move up. So Right now, I would not, even if I do enter, I would not enter a large position because for risk management purposes, I want to enter on the dip, not on the break, right? So zoom on watch as well. Let's see what else we got. Netflix also forming the same thing like zoom, this little consolidation pattern, a little triangle. If we get a push up towards here, I'm still looking for a longer term time frame dip. So let me show you guys what that would look like. So we got a move up on the daily, a little correction. So the question on Netflix is right now it had a correction. Is this the actual dip on the daily time frame? This little dip towards the EMA. So I don't know if you guys see it properly, but basically after this huge move up, we had a consolidation towards the EMA, right? So this could be the dip, which means I'm looking at the, the hourly time frame right over here. For potential continuation which is why i have drawn in this little triangle and that would be my buy on the break for a next potential move up now reminder that zoom netflix neo these are shorter term uh, buys because we're not at the bottom anymore we're in the middle of the move so we're just trying to scalp the last few percentage so let's say this goes up towards the top you know, this is like a 5% move, and if it continues higher, good for us. But for now, this is a shorter term move, okay? So, D-Dog. D-Dog, I know a lot of people are also looking at this one. And we're looking... Oh, sorry, this is Fastly, not D-Dog. So, Fastly is very interesting because we were looking at it as of here, okay? We bought this little uh, trend change over here. Bought it into a 40% profit move, so that was... Congrats team to whoever took that move. And after it dipped, I kept saying, guys, wait, wait, wait for a four hour trend change. And I said, it's possible that we actually go retest this support over here, which we did. And now I'm looking for a four hour trend change for my buy, okay? And what would a four hour trend change look like? Well, ideally in a perfect world, I'd want to see it correct a little bit more than this and then continue up. This is in a perfect world. However, we do not live in a perfect world, 
and this 4 hour correction could be happening right now. This could be the 4 hour correction, which means we're going to zoom in to the 15 minute time frame. And from there, we're going to spot if we can see, first of all, a 15 minute downtrend. So we can see it right here, high, low, lower, high, downtrend. So that's signal number one that the 4 hour top is set is right over here. And now what I'm looking for is a 15 minute uptrend to start buying again. So if this go goes up to here, corrects, and then passes this line here, whoops, this is a little crooked, but you gotta get the point. If it passes that resistance over here, then that means the four hour correction is potentially done sideways for another move up, okay? So fastly on watch this week, actually as of tomorrow, for the next move up and this would be a potential week one week swing until this resistance let's see how powerful the bulls are on the entire market because that really has a huge impact on all of these moves okay now dkng uh dkng also we were looking at four hour rsi being oversold so that was right over here okay and it was hitting a support that we found from over here by the way congratulations to whoever took this move with me this was a very nice triangle that we looked at as well and now we're looking to buy dkng as well on the correction so if this is able to correct healthily like this and continue higher we want to be buying on this dip which means i'm going to zoom into the 15 minute time frame once again and look for a 15 minute uptrend now, it seems like the 15 minute uptrend has already happened, so that was right around here. So technically, I missed this move, and if tomorrow we can get it a little dip around this level, then I would be entering some positions with a stop loss under this level here, okay? So that would be my position on DKNG for a potential move up. So that's on watch, and my main target for DKNG is $48 based on, let me see based on these supports over here that can act as a resistance as well as a let me see if I can see the Fibonacci level I might have used that as well as a target so it'll be between the 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 so yeah I'm looking at 48 as a target which would give us a nice little let's see how much 15% gain and if the bulls are strong they will be able to pass that so it all really depends on the market bulls guys this these every single trade we're looking at right now if the market bulls start correcting very hard and the bears take over then we have to wait patiently for the trend changes to happen as i've been saying so trend changes are key okay that's what i was saying on the entire dip i said we're not seeing trend changes we're not buying it and then at the bottom we start seeing some trend changes so we started buying Okay, same thing around these levels. I want to see healthy correction and then trend changes for the next moves up. So AMD, Microsoft, NNOX, these are all very similar. So I'm going to cover, let's say, just one of them and it'll be the same thing for all of them. So we'll start off with AMD. AMD forming this nice triangle. It's starting to break out, but it has not passed this resistance. So it's not a breakout just yet in my criteria. Now, what I'm looking for is whenever this move tops out wherever it tops out i want to see a healthy correction and then continuation so we want to be buying on this correction for a potential move up so and the microsoft same thing see it's at the top and nox it's a little different this one actually um it was on our watch list but i missed the buy because i was busy doing other stuff i said wait for a four hour trend change which happened right over here so this blue line right over here was the buy and now it's up already if we can get a, a nice decent correction then i will be starting to scale in because i'm looking at this longer term triangle here and if it breaks out properly we have some very nice potential profit so nnox definitely on watch let's look out tomorrow if we can see a nice little correction and that would be my buy now amazon very similar to the entire market amd microsoft as i've been saying so this one is super interesting as well however i know that it's pretty expensive for a lot of people in the group so uh, i'm not going to really cover it i'm just going to say we're watching this triangle and it's the same thing as all the other ones if we can get a nice topping out around here 
and then a little correction like this, that would be ideal for an entry. Of course, ideal doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it would be the best case scenario for our risk to reward strategies. Okay. ISRG, another one that I'm looking at, this one's super interesting too. Once again, I want this to top out somewhere here and then correct before it move up. That would be the best case scenario. So ISRG, I know there's a lot of things on my watch list, by the way, guys. These are mainly all tech stocks. After this, I'm going to do um, renewable energy and wheat stocks because Biden won the election, which means that those two are on our watch list. Those are the two main watch list uh, sectors on our watch list. So we'll be covering those right after the tech stocks. And now if I go towards, okay, SPLK, this is also a swing position that we can take based on this weekly triangle, okay, that's forming right now. So for this to form properly, we want to see it even do another test of this resistance before breaking out, which means we want to be buying on the dip over here and on the dip over here. So if we zoom in to the daily time frame, this dip over here, we want to see a daily trend change to increase the likelihood that the weekly low is set. So daily trend change looks like this, which means that if we zoom in even more, we want to be buying on this dip if it's healthy. Right now, I'm seeing increasing bear volume, so I will be waiting a little bit for this one. You guys look, look at this increasing bear volume right now, so I want to wait patiently for an hourly trend change. Okay, so basically just to give you guys the idea, to find a weekly low, I'm looking for a daily trend change. To find a daily low, I'm looking for an hourly trend change, which, which means that on this chart, I'm looking for the hourly trend to change. And then if I zoom out to the daily, that would give us the daily low. And then if I zoom out to the weekly, that would give us the weekly low. So that's the idea behind this trade and basically all the trades we're looking at. So all the swing trades anyway, not the day trades. But we're using multi time frame analysis in order to determine which ones are going to be uh, better positioned for us. Okay, so SPLK on watch, NGT, this is gold miners. We've been watching it ever since this dip, and now I'm just waiting for a healthy correction, which I might have missed right over here, but it's okay. We could still be waiting for the daily correction to occur. So let's say this tops out somewhere over here and then corrects like this before continuing higher i want to be buying that dip right there so ngt on watch as well and one of the last ones on the text sector is going to be shopify forming this nice triangle here and it looks like they already had its consolidation a little bit on the ema you guys see it passed the ema and then touched it twice now it might continue higher and if it does, I'm waiting for a nice pullback before a continuation move like this. So once again, guys, the theme of today is I'm waiting for these corrections. Just like we were waiting here, we bought these dips on a lot of these stocks and now we're up. So I'm looking for the next corrections to be buying more on my positions. OK, so patience is key. And OK, we'll do one more in the tech sector, which is HYLN. Let me see if I have anything else. Yeah. We'll do HYLN in the tech, tech sector because I know some people are watching it. But once again, um, we had this nice move up above the blue line over here, the EMA. And now it's consolidating on the EMA. And if this consolidation remains healthy, that will be my signal to buy for the potential next move up towards this resistance here. Which would give us how much? About 17% profit. So I'm looking at HYLN. And what is my signal to buy into HYLN? Well, let's zoom in, okay? First of all, I want this to correct more. I want this hourly time frame to correct a little bit more than this, maybe towards these levels here. And then from there, create an uptrend. If this happens exactly the way I drew it, then I will be entering on this dip right here and on the break right there. So HYLN on the watch, I'm still going to be a little bit patient for it, and let's continue to watch it. Also, congratulations to whoever took the plug alert that I gave. I actually, did, I actually didn't take it the same way. There was this little triangle forming over here on the 4-hour correction. I said, if the bulls are strong, and if the 4-hour correction is... Oops, sorry guys, on TikTok. And if the correction is healthy, which it was... 
then this could have potential move towards the blue line. And look at this, guys. We hit the blue line perfectly. So congratulations to whoever took this. This is a nice little 15, 16% move. Okay, now let's move on to renewable energy, which I'm looking at a few plays for this week, not that many, because I already have my positions on it. So whoever was following me as of last week, you guys should also have your positions on renewable energy. Now, one that I'm looking for this week is RUN, R-U-N. Why? Because we have this, ever since we have this top over here, so let me, let me zoom out even more, actually, to show you guys the bigger picture. So where's the coronavirus drop? The coronavirus drop is here, and ever since then, we've been in a nice, uh, steady uptrend. And ever since here, boom, it exploded, right? Hit a top, hit a double top, if you guys can see these two weeks and corrected towards here, which means I'm looking for a low to potentially play the move up towards this level here. I'm not going to hold it all the way until all time highs because that's not the most likely scenario. And I'll explain why. So let me zoom out even more to the monthly time frame. If I take a Fibonacci level, okay, and go from the top of the move to the bottom of this monthly uh, candlestick move, right? If I do that, we can see that the bears have taken away about 45% of this whole move. So we're, we're at the 0 0.6 level. So they took away about 45% of the move, which means the most likely scenario is that the bears will be able to hold the resistance, which means if I take the same Fibonacci level like this, I'm looking for a lower high compared to this high. So somewhere around here, and somewhere around here. Now I'm going to delete the Fibonacci level and we're going to zoom into the daily time frame to see if there are any daily resistance and supports around here. And yes, there are. There's one here and there's one here. So these are both two likely scenarios. And what I wanted to do to buy into this is going to happen probably very soon. I wanted to wait for a four hour trend change. Okay. What does that mean? That means I want to see a low, a high, a higher low somewhere on the EMA and then a break of this level here. If this happens on Monday or Tuesday, I will be buying this little dip. So my target is around here. And in order to buy this dip, I'm going to zoom into the 15 minute time frame and I want to see a 15 minute trend change. So let me delete all of this over here just to show you guys what that would look like. On the 15 minute chart, I want to see a low a high, higher low, and break. So if this happens, like it did over here, then that would indicate the bottom, just like it did here, of the next potential move up, okay? And that would be my entry for this swing position that will last probably until, yeah, probably until uh, November 17. So maybe a good week or two on this swing position. We'll see how long the bulls take to do this. But once again, only buying it if the correction remains healthy, so declining bear volume, and if we see the 15-minute trend change on the EMA. That's my criteria for RUN. Okay, so that's renewable energy. CBAT, congratulations to whoever took this. Uh, it took how many days? One, let's see over here. It took two days to hit our target. And our target was hit exactly on the second day at 24% profit. So congratulations to whoever took it. I was actually not in this one. I took instead, uh, which one did I take? I took other ones that we're going to see soon. Okay. Let's go look at BE. Okay, BE had this very nice triangle forming on the weekly time frame. Once again... The weekly time frames at this point are pretty key, okay? BE had this nice weekly triangle here, broke out, and the bears took everything back. Now, I'm looking at trying to buy this bottom for a potential move up towards here, and the most likely scenario is that the bulls will not be able to pass this high because of how much power the bears had. What does that mean? That means I'm looking for a lower high to be set, and because of how strong they were, I'm not going to be looking all the way up here. I'm looking between this level and this level here, okay? So now I'm going to delete all of this, and we'll zoom into the daily time frame, because since we're looking for the weekly low, we want to buy the daily trend change. 
okay and as you guys can see the daily trend there's a low a high a higher low and break so the daily trend has already changed and now it's consolidating which means this is this is where we're looking to buy pretty soon so what I want to see for a buy is first of all the bear volume has to start declining because now it's increasing which is not good and this means that the bears are taking control so bear volume has to be decreasing and uh, sorry I think some people have their mics on I'm just gonna mute you okay so if this is able to create a nice trend change okay so let's say it dips towards here and then creates a trend change like this well that is my signal to enter on the hourly time frame for a daily low to be set okay now let me just delete all this and if this daily low is set here then we can look at potential continuation so that's my plan for BE KOS, I was looking at it, not anymore. Let's see what else on the solar, uh, sorry, on the renewable energy sector. We had Sun W, so this one is a little risky. However, I took some positions on it and it's not too late because it's correcting now. So I'm I took some positions based on this triangle forming over here, okay? And based on the fact that we were bottoming out. So you guys can see over here how fast the bears are able to take the price down and then over here oh the bears have no more power around this level they're kind of stagnant and now the bulls are starting to take over so this momentum changing okay indicates to me okay there's a potential buy opportunity around this level for a move up so I bought on the break of this triangle and now it's consolidating very nicely with declining bear volume this is what we want to see declining bear volume and if the bears are sorry if the bulls are able to hold up this consolidation nicely then we could get a potential move up after this so if anyone wanted to play sun w this week this is what i'm looking at i already have my positions here and if the correction is healthy i will be adding to my positions okay let's go to some other renewable energy stocks now these are all my watch lists but i'm not seeing any patterns that i like yet which is why i'm not going to be going over them extensively uh, npi was actually nice around this level and even around this level here but it's a very slow growing stock so i was kind of uninterested by it it made only a few percent like this is a three percent move so not very interested in that one oh bep actually yeah this one's uh we have some positions on it so so whoever is holding this in the group we bought it around this level here for the triangle break and then I said guys watch out for a new triangle to be forming around here boom broke out bullish now we want to see the bull volume increasing just like it is here we want to see the bull volume increasing even more into the move up to hit our target of 20% profit okay so my target is around $64 now let's see if the bulls can hold up this move okay after this, we should go to wheat stocks. Let me just see if there's anything else in here that I like. Oh yeah, we also have some TAN. This is a solar energy ETF from this level over here. I'm just waiting for the consolidation to be healthy for the next move up. So waiting for that for the next buy. I'm looking at that one. Okay, that'll be all for the solar energy stocks. Actually, BLX looks pretty interesting. Let me see what's going on here. Okay, last one for solar energy will be VLX because I see this nice reversal pattern over here, this triangle at the bottom of this move here for a potential move towards these targets. Now, technically the buy was already missed. It's over here at this line, but we're fairly close. So if you want to increase your risk on it, it'll give you a, about a 2% risk for potentially... Yeah, you see this one also, I wasn't watching it that much because the profit is maximum 7% on this move for a 2% risk so I'm not super interested in it right now and I don't think you guys are either so wheat stocks these ones are fairly interesting okay let me just guys whoever has their mics on uh, very appreciated if you guys can mute yourself thank you okay CL so what's going on with wheat stocks we have some position in wheat stocks um, I bought some CL based on 
this nice cup and handle that was forming here, a nice cup with a nice little handle, and it broke out bullish with increasing uh, bull volume. So this is a good sign for us, okay? And now, oh, let me just get that back. And now, what are we looking at? Well, if you're not in this move already, I don't suggest taking it right now because the risk is much higher. And even if it is forming a little triangle over here, it's still very risky to be taking the trade at this level because, my, yes, my target is all the way up here, but this is more of a long-term position that we started buying on the way up over here, okay? So be careful with CL. If you're not in it yet, I would wait patiently. And we're looking at other wheat stocks that are actually correcting nicely so far, so they're looking at some potential opportunity for buying, okay? For example, Cron, C-R-O-N. We had, look at the bull volume going into the move, and look at the bear volume going out of the move. So this is very healthy consolidation and it's going towards the EMA here. If we're able to bounce off of it and create a new triangle here, that would be ideal. But I'm looking to buy this little dip over here. And reminder, this is also risky because we had a very big move up. So I'm only looking to scalp a little move higher. I'm not looking to hold this long term because this is not a long-term trade. This this would only be a long-term trade if we're able to correct towards this daily EMA and then continue higher. So for now, I'm just looking at some little day trades or week trades based on these hourly EMAs. Okay, so let's observe the bear volume on Monday. If the bears have increasing bear volume like this, and then we see a, a candlestick going towards here, then I'm not gonna be looking at buying the hourly dip, I will be looking at waiting longer for the four hour EMA to come towards here. And then that would be my buy-in for the next move up. So Cron, AFA, this is Afria. So also on watch for this pattern forming here. It's a little choppy. So new traders, be careful. Look at the look at the bear volume. So whoever's looking at wheat stocks right now, <clears throat> notice which ones have run up and which ones have not run up because Oftentimes in markets, money is shifting from larger cap to mid cap to small cap. So you want to be observing which ones have already run up hard and which ones are lagging behind for a potential move up. Okay. Now, from what I'm seeing over here, most of them are at a point where I would not buy them right now. I would wait for a correction, which is once again, the general theme of the whole the whole market psychology right now basically i'm waiting for some decent four hour corrections and decent daily corrections to enter more positions also congratulations to whoever bought vff on the call it's up quite nicely it hit a 20 percent target over here and now it's correcting decently just be careful of the bear volume once again these wheat stocks ran up very hard and i'm basically waiting for consolidation to be buying real positions on them, okay? So there's not one individual name that I'm liking for a buy tomorrow, for example. And I will, in that case, be waiting. Let me see if there's anything else. Oh yeah, Tilt, congratulations to whoever bought this on the call. I was looking at this pattern forming here and I said if it breaks this level with increasing bull volume, it'll likely hit this top resistance here. And that was a nice 20% 22% move, so congratulations to whoever took it. ACB. I know a lot of you guys are looking at ACB because it just ran up very hard. When something runs up this this heavy, so for example, this was in one day a 150% gain, okay? What does this mean? Well, two things. It could correct very hard because there was no supports established on the way up. And... It could also mean that there's bulls waiting to get into this, so it means the dips are very attractive, okay? So what does that mean? Well, if we correct to the hourly EMA, so this is one of the day trades I will be taking tomorrow if this happens, what I'm about to say. If we correct to the hourly EMA with declining bear volume, and we change the 5-minute trend, okay? Which means I want to see this low being set, high, higher low and break of this level here. So if this happens tomorrow morning, this will be a nice little buy for a potential move up. Just keep in mind, it's 
increased risk because we ran up very hard recently and it's likely that we're going to see a correction. So I'm only taking this trade with profits that I made that I'm comfortable losing from last week. Okay, so careful on this one guys, but it's a nice setup for a potential reversal as long as the bears do not see any increased volume. Also, wheat stocks have a bunch of earnings coming out this week, so be careful for that too. Okay, Okay. last one I want to look at on wheat stocks is uh, GRWG. So, this one was forming, it's a little bit less clear on this time frame, so it was forming a nice triangle like this it hit the top the bottom the top the bottom and now it broke out right it broke out with increasing bull volume now once again watch out for earnings on monday i'm not going to be playing these until the earnings are done okay so all of these weak weak stocks i will not be playing them until earnings are out because it's a it's a gamble into earnings if earnings are good it doesn't mean the stock's going to go up it could still mean that the stock goes down so what i'm looking for grwg is a nice correction on earnings tomorrow potentially until the EMA and then if there's a reversal I will be buying this dip right over here for the potential move towards these resistances so this would give us let's see a nice 20% 24% profit for approximately 5% risk but we don't have enough information yet to determine that so that's why it's on my watch list into the week okay so guys wheat stocks that ran up very hard be careful there's earnings coming out wait for the correction be patient and for everything else i was looking at well that's what it is guys we're just waiting patiently for these corrections on most of these names and uh yeah break on workhorse so anyway to recap the summary of the market psychology we're looking at the long-term triangle. Can the bulls pass? Is this the consolidation that the bulls want for another break into all-time highs? Or will we see the bears take over at this point, create a new low, and then potential continuation? Okay, so this is the ultimate question of the week. And now is the time for you guys to start giving me some stocks that you guys are looking at. So. If there's anyone looking at some stocks that they're thinking of buying, that they're thinking of selling, whatever it is, you guys could just let